Matt Voigt worked for the city of Hayes, and he applied for a job with the city of Hayesville, outside of Wichita. In his interview, he disclosed the fact that he had gotten a knife in his position as police officer at the city of Hayes. Hayesville offered him a job, but told him that he had to tell the city of Hayes that he'd taken this knife and return it. So he went back to the city of Hayes and he returned the knife. His chief asked him to write a statement about what happened. This is what Matt Hayes claims was a self-incriminating statement that he was compelled to write. He wrote a one sentence statement that was vague and he resigned. The chief then asked him to write a longer statement, which he did. That statement was used to gather evidence and the evidence in the statement were turned over to the Kansas Bureau of Investigations. Ultimately, charges were brought against Matt Hayes, and the position at the city of Hayesville was rescinded. He was charged with two felonies for taking this knife. But at the probable cause hearing, the judge concluded that there wasn't enough evidence to go forward, even with his compelled statements about taking the knife. Voight would like to sue the city of Hayes for money damages for violating his Fifth Amendment rights. The Fifth Amendment states that you shall not be compelled in a criminal case to be a witness against yourself. So that's kind of the million dollar question in this case. How broad is the definition of criminal case? Is it merely a trial right or is it right that extends beyond a trial to other parts of the criminal process? The steps in a criminal procedure are generally as follows. First, a defendant is arrested. After charging and within 24 hours of being arrested, a Gernstein hearing takes place, where a court determines whether or not there was probable cause for the arrest to take place. After that, there's a probable cause hearing where the court determines whether there's enough evidence to go forward with a trial. The next phase is a trial, and then sentencing and possibly an appeal. So the Voight case got as far as the probable cause hearing. And at this probable cause hearing, his statements were introduced as evidence. But nevertheless, the judge concluded there wasn't enough evidence to continue with the trial. So Voight argues that if you look at the Fifth Amendment, it's very clear that a criminal case is broader than just a trial. You look at its history, its text, and its origins. All those factors indicate that the term criminal case should be broader than just a trial right. The Fifth Amendment uses that term, criminal case. It doesn't use the term criminal trial, for example. Also, it doesn't use the term criminal prosecution, which is a term used in the Sixth Amendment, which is much more narrow than criminal case. Hayes argues that the issue in this case is not when a criminal trial ends or begins. The issue instead is whether or not a person is being a witness against himself or herself. In a probable cause hearing, someone's innocence or guilt is not being determined. Instead, what's being determined is whether or not there's enough evidence to go forward with a trial. And you're not a witness against yourself, says Hayes, unless it's in a context in which you can be declared innocent or guilty. And of course, a probable cause hearing doesn't offer that opportunity. It seems like a very simple question. Can self-incriminating statements be admitted at a probable cause hearing? Yet it's never been decided by the Supreme Court. So this case gives the court an opportunity to look back at what the founders have done, to look at their precedent, and to decide this important question about how broad and how far the right against self-incrimination extends.